So in multivariable calculus, students often learn that the non-zero tangent vector to a smooth curve C, defined by R prime of T, and uh, points, of course, in the direction of increasing parameter. Now, if we normalize that vector, it will be a unit vector. And hence, we come up with the term a unit tangent vector. And the formula for that is T of T equals R prime of T over the norm of R prime of T. Now, if a vector-valued function has a constant norm, then that function and its derivative are orthogonal vectors. Now, think about this. The unit tangent vector has a constant norm, namely 1. It's a unit vector. So it must be orthogonal to its derivative, that is, t prime of t. Therefore, if t prime of t does not equal the 0 vector, we can define the unit normal vector as n of t equals t prime of t over the norm of t prime of t. And students now often ask, well, what does that imply? Uh, textbooks often mention that this will exclude straight lines from having a unit normal vector. But why? Well, they often prove to students that, in two space anyway, the unit normal vector would have to point on the concave side of a curve. That is, the curve that's bending in a certain way inside the U-shape of the curve, if you will. And since a straight line doesn't bend, students are told, well, that's an intuitive way of remembering that a line does not have a unit normal vector to speak of because there's no way for that unit normal ve vector to point in the direction of how the curve is bending since lines are straight. But is there a more computational analytical reason as to why? And the answer is yes. If you just think about how we define lines in vector form, if you have two vectors, r sub 0 vector and r sub 1 vector, and they're not equivalent, then their difference, r sub 1 vector minus r sub 0 vector, would define a line if we scale that difference accordingly. So here you see on the bottom of the slide, the position vector for a line can be generalized as r sub 0 vector plus t, a scale of the difference of r sub 1 minus r sub 0. Of course, you could write it this way as well. So with this expression, which by the way is called the two-point vector form of a line, we can use it to show computationally, if you will, or in general, why lines are excluded from having a unit normal vector. We'll need a few tools in order to do that. One of those tools is the derivative of a scalar times a vector function. Students learn that they have to take that scalar outside and take the derivative with respect to t of r of t. That'll come into play here. Also, if we look at the expression for a position for a straight line defined this way, r prime of t would definitely result in, let's think, Let's see, r sub 0 vector is a constant vector, so its derivative would be 0 vector. Hmm, t times r sub 1, t times negative r sub 0. Well, t times negative r sub 0, we have that negative 1 that's going to be taken on the outside, and you're left with derivative with respect to t would be negative r sub 0 vector. And of course, the derivative of t times r sub 1 vector with respect to t is just r sub 1 vector. Now, taking the derivative of that would be r double prime. And since r sub 0 vector and r sub 1 vector were both said to be constant vectors, as we saw in the diagram previously, we know that r double prime of t is just a sum of three zero vectors, giving us, of course, the zero vector. One more thing we'll need is to remind ourselves what the uh, formula for the unit tangent vector is. It's r prime of t over the norm of r prime of t. So with all these tools now at our disposal, we can show why it makes no sense to say that a line has a unit normal vector. So again, taking these formulas that we had from before, if we were going to try to get a unit normal vector, which is t prime of t over the norm of t prime of t, we would first need to figure out what t prime of t is. Well, t prime of t would be the derivative of t of t. But look carefully now at this expression. r prime of t is a vector-valued function. 1 over the norm of r prime of t is a scalar function. So t prime of t, we would have to use a special version of the product rule with involving um, scalar functions interacting or multiplying with vector-valued functions. So let's see if we could do that. Let's see. r prime of t times the derivative of 1 over r prime of t. That's what this means. 1 over norm of r prime of t prime plus 
the scalar function 1 over the norm of r prime of t times the derivative of this top vector valued function which would be of course r double prime of t. So now with the product rule correctly applied we need to just make some observations. Remember that r prime of t was the difference of two constant vectors. So the norm of r prime of t is the norm of the difference of two constant vectors which must be a non-zero scalar. So this results in the following. If you have one divided by a non-zero scalar prime, students remember the derivative of a constant is just zero. So now we have r prime of t times zero scalar is just zero a vector. And here we have r double prime of t. We remember that's the zero vector divided by that non-zero scalar giving us more zero vector. But of course that would mean that t, the norm of t prime of t would be equal to zero scalar making the unit normal vector undefined. So again that is why we say that a line does not have a unit normal vector to speak of. Now let's get to the question of whether or not, let's get to the question of whether or not an inflection point would have a unit normal vector to speak of. Keep in mind that the unit normal vector formula is t prime of t over the norm of t prime of t. And let's take a, an example of a function that we know has an inflection point. Perhaps you could take a guess as to where we're going to focus on. Like y equals sine of x. We could write that in vector form as t comma sine t making r prime 1 cosine t. So if we go through the motions of these formulas, t of t would be that vector over the norm and t prime of t, using the product rule structure, would be all of this. Trust me on this. And if we do a little simplification after distributing the scalar functions in with to the vector expressions, we get t prime of t equals all this together. Adding them up, we get this expression. So if I did all of the calculus and all of the fractions and all the computations and expressions correctly, we're now going to focus on a particular value for t where we know sine of t has an inflection point, or the graph of y equals sine of x has an inflection point. Namely, let's try t equals pi. Look carefully at the numerators of each piece of this vector-valued expression. Each numerator has a sine of t involved. And if you recall, the sine of pi is 0. So that would result in the 0 vector. And that certainly means, again, if you have the norm of t prime at pi equaling the zero vector, then if you were to try to find the unit normal vector at that location, you would have a division by zero issue. So we say that this unit normal vector would not exist when t equals pi, which makes sense because, you guessed it, at pi we have this inflection point where the graph of sine does not bend in any particular direction at that instant. So it all really harmonizes nicely together as to why this is the case. Both lines and any locations of a graph that have inflection points would not have any unit normal vector to speak of. Hope you enjoyed this video.